Welcome everybody to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. My name is Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski uh, as the speaker for today and just call me Stefan uh, so you see my last name that's uh, really getting complicated so uh, no matter absolutely directly Stefan is the right choice. Yeah, today we have the 18th of May 2017 and um, now I'm smiling and somebody will know why. Um, and we have uh, 7 p.m. and uh, M-E-S-Z uh, and uh, because I have been asked for what uh, does that stand for and that is uh, Middle, Middle Europe Summertime Zone. So so um, I'm not absolutely sure whether I got it 100% right um, because uh, this summertime, I'm not sure whether you really named it that way. But anyhow, um, we are together and that's quite well. So today's topic or title of uh, today's webinar is uh, trend strategies and yeah talking about trends in trading is always something good that is uh, we like and i know that the, this basic setup is uh, somebody for um, is for everybody uh, a good strategy but i will look to that uh, maybe a little bit different than you did it in the past so just uh, wait a second um, for that webinar and I hope that you can learn a little bit more about uh, trend strategies and trend trading. Um, yeah, before we go into the details, uh, just a few seconds here before uh, I have always to um, show up uh, exactly that slide, uh, the so-called risk disclaimer, because, you know, we uh, talk about trading strategies, but I have to mention that finally when you uh, do your own trading. Um, yeah, you do it always uh, as for uh, for your own, and I assume that you know it quite well. So, uh, so that is mentioned. Uh, so we can directly go into the topics of today. But before doing that, uh, let me quickly uh, mention that uh, during our last two webinars, and you find those webinars uh, on the YouTube channel of JFT Brokers. Uh, quite easily. Um, we have had two strategies. One was about pair trading, um, oil brand WTI, and the other has been the DAX seasonal, the uh, day of week trading. And I mentioned at that time, hey, yeah, I will trade those uh, strategies further. So um, let me quickly show you. Um, it's indeed those strategies running, but it's not this one here. This is a little bit more uh, complicated one. Um, but we have here the first one, which has been the um, pair trading on the two oils, Brent and WTI. So finally, right now we don't have a trade running, um, but we are, yeah. Uh, in the profit region, uh, so we have earned up to now 64 euros, so that's good. Um, so strategy works well. And uh, the other strategy, which is actually um, already running, is uh, this one. This is the one I showed during the development phase of uh, this strategy, because at, um, at that point in time, uh, the strategy has been traded on the so-called future contract of uh, JFD, so, so the CFD on a future contract, um, with the restriction that we can only have volumes in steps of one. So therefore, we trade always here um, one lot. Um, and you see the result up to now. Um, yeah, we have earned a little bit more than 400 euros with such a strategy. And now everything has been um, developed in a way that we can use the same strategy on the DAX index, um, still entering the trades at 8 o'clock uh, and uh, closing our trades at uh, 22 or so 10 p.m. And uh, that is now the new account here. So this uh, runs as well. Today, is a long long trading day that means we, uh, we have opened a long trade this is yeah um, a little bit in the minus but <laughs> for example look for yesterday yesterday was a short trading day simply because of the de definitions and yeah 
Uh, indeed, that was a quite good trade. Uh, yesterday, you see that black candle here, a uh, huge candle mm, to the south, and uh, that was fully taken. So really um, a wonderful trade yesterday. But we know all that uh, this needs a little bit more statistics and we have to wait a little bit more about final results but anyhow i just want to share those results with you because for me it's um, important uh, that i mention that what i do here and what i'm talking about is not something out of the fantasy so it's uh, something real and uh, that might be a little bit different to a lot of other speakers um, and the good thing is but not at jfd we what we talk about is what we trade and um, that is meant quite serious so today is all about trend strategies and i have simply three topics in total here and the first is i want to share with you some basic aspects about uh, trend trading strategies and why they are in principle quite good or important for anybody's trading activities um, in a more general way and generally looking to trend trading activities and then i would like to share with you two um, strategies and one is called the multiple ema and the other one is called the lead leg strategy which is a, a forex uh, strategy only that is really meant for the forex markets um, whereas the first one is something which is good for indices as well or any other underlyings in principle both strategies are not in a way we talk about the last two one during my last uh, two webinars those are still strategies where you and everybody has to make decisions so uh, if you think about uh, the one of uh, DAX day, day or week trading, there we have an absolutely set of rules. We know exactly what to do at what point in time and anything. So that was a real um, yeah, systematic approach with fixed rules. What we do here for those two strategies is we, we have rules, yes. But uh, the final decisions about stop loss, for example, uh, the exact um entry point in time uh, entry point in price is still something we have to derive out of the chart so it's a little bit more like normal chart trading but with some help with a little bit assistance uh, by some basic rules but before i totally dig into um the trend uh, trading definitions and all just to remind you why trend trading is that important uh, you remember that chart has been showed already uh, shown last week or two weeks ago in the DAX webinar uh, just to think hey yeah trends are something quite good and you see that it's a dux for the last uh, 17 years there are faces with clear trends and those trends of course can from now looking to the history being identified quite easily and anybody could do that uh, even my grandma uh, would be able to find the right traits uh, in those um, in this chart and uh, nothing against grandmas but uh, uh, mine is uh, 90 years old so uh, but anyhow so uh, here you see absolutely good trend behaviors but of course we have faces with no trend and the question is now how can we identify even at the early stage of a trend that we should enter a trade in either long or short direction anyhow so but this chart gives you you know just one simple picture uh, already the idea of the importance about trend trading and why we should have in our overall toolbox about trading uh, trend strategies as well so um, so why is trend trading that important on the one hand um, I can share with you a result uh, which is not pure mathematically derived when I say, hey, trends 
in a pure sense, are only 30% time-wise of all overall movements. So it's only about one third of the time that we have clear, visible, good trends. And nevertheless, I'm saying, hey, it's a good idea to have a trend trading strategies in our portfolio. And there are a couple of reasons for that. And But the main reason is that those strong trends and they will they have occurred in the past and they will occur in the future as well those trends those trends are what i call a deviation from from random behavior you know if you look for stock market movements in general everything looks quite random and that's right it is to a huge amount it is indeed random but there are some specific deviations one is the topic of next week that is power candles and for example another one are those trends because those strong trends as already been seen in the ducks movement uh, in my previous uh, chart uh, yeah they in principle can occur by random behavior as well as if you throw a coin, uh, it might happen that uh, 100 times in a row uh, you have uh, the number um, on top. In principle, that's even possible randomly. But in general, those trends are deviations from random behavior. And therefore, those are good point in times to have trades in our account. As always, the problem with trends is to realize them. Looking to a historic chart, it's always easy. But to be already at the very beginning of a trend into the right direction and with a trend, that is something I want to address with the strategy one, so the um, multiple EMA strategy. And it's a little bit related to when we have trends, then we have this typical uh, movements with uh, higher highs and uh, higher lows, for example, for upward trends. And you will see, A, there's a good idea to find those correction phases. And those could be the trigger entering a trade. Another approach is that um, that's now purely related to Forex, that we know the Forex um, universum is huge. So we can trade uh, yeah, not only 10 Forex pairs, maybe even 100. I'm not sure about the exact number at uh, JFD, but you know that there are um, hundreds of Forex pairs. Although because those are, because, uh, those are that many, it's already difficult to identify those which have the best trend behavior and you don't want to click through all those charts. But there's a nice idea to, to find those just by looking to a few charts and then we can identify immediately the one out of much more than we observe directly, the one with the strongest trend behavior at all. And that is exactly this lead leg strategy, um, and uh, that is my second strategy. What is common with all activities about trend trading that is that you need risk reward ratios uh, much bigger than one, uh, typically even uh, bigger than three or in the range or close to three. So the, the, the relation between the potential profit and your stop loss setting is like three to one or even higher. Why? It's not easy to have uh, a good win weight with trend trading. And that reflects already the number here. Only 30% of the time we are in a real trending behavior. That means we have to enter a couple of trades and we have unfortunately to suffer sometimes um, being in the stop loss okay that means on the other hand that if we are on the right side then we need profits 
much higher than uh, one R, one risk unit of our trade, um, because we have to compensate our other losses. So trend trading means trading with risk reward ratios much bigger than one, because, and uh, this is not because of a bad strategy, your win rate is always much below 50%. And believe me, you will not find a trend trading strategy with win weights um, above 50%. Um, there's no chance, uh, at least not if you have uh, the right um, risk uh, reward ratio. So therefore, that is something really um, important. Whenever you do trend trading activities, you need those risk reward ratios. But now let's come to, directly into the first kind of strategy. Um, and I will do it the following. I will talk a little bit about that slide and uh, about uh, how we we get the strategy right and uh, that you understand that. But finally, um, be sure that uh, I will go directly to MT4 and show it uh, in the chart as well, because then a few things might might be a little bit more obvious. Um, so you have both. And um, yeah, if you want, you can, uh, of course, have those slides. Up to now, I forgot, unfortunately, to um, to already upload them that, so that you can download them um, directly out of, out of the GoToWebinar control panel. But one email and uh, later at the end, you will see my email address as well. Or you just uh, write an email to uh, support at uh, jftbrokers.com, uh, you will get the slides, uh, no question. So whenever you have, um, if you want, you can have those slides. So this multiple EMA strategy tries to find or to generate better entries instead of just jumping on the trend. Sometimes you have those observations, hey, you see the trend and it's already running. Uh, and then you think, should I just jump into it? Um, so market for example, Euro, US dollar goes down. Um, yeah, so open short position as we speak. So that is jumping on the trend. That is not totally bad, I would say, but there's something you can do better. And you know that price movements finally are not a straight line you have always correction phases always those points in those point in times that something goes opposite to the overall trend and now the question is this correction should come to an end and the market should go in the overruling um, direction once again and that is the one we try to find and that is the one we try to enter our trade. That is a little bit simil similar to so-called market technique, or I don't know the exact English translation because um, yeah, it's maybe a typical German one. Uh, so, But that is a pure movement like higher highs and higher lows for up upwards trends. Uh, and uh, you know that for sure. And what we do is to get those better entries is we use four EMAs. And I wrote down here a list of EMA periods and um, 20, 40, 80, and 160. You see, I simply double uh, the EMA. Uh, and it not really depends. It was uh, within the German um, webinar yesterday. Hey, can I use 20, 50, 100, 200 as well? And the answer is, of course, yes. Um, that will not change the, the complete picture, and we will get similar entries as well. But how, what we do with those EMAs? What we do is we look for constriction phases. When those four EMAs values constrict, that means they come together. Uh, you will see it visually in a second. That is always a good sign that the correction of the overall trend comes to an end. And then it's a good point in time to open our next trade. The trade direction, in principle, I would prefer the slope of the slowest EMA. So if the slowest EMA is still upwards, then open the trade into the long direction. But 
there are examples if you see uh, mathematically slope is um, yeah well uh, defined but uh, sometimes i would say let's look to the overall situation as well finally we need as always we need a stop loss for a trade and those stop losses can be set out of the chart or you might look for atr values average two ranges um, to get a good stop loss value and once again what you need is risk reward ratio bigger than or equal three in order to get it right but let's do it directly in the chart and um, don't be confused if you see first thing now uh, that construct of my profiling here of a big um, 20 different forex pairs in this case uh, um, don't worry uh, that's not you will see why i do it in that way but i will immediately uh, enlarge uh, one of those charts uh, because then things might become much more obvious so uh, maybe uh, you you put away a little bit your go to webinar control panel then you see the complete chart uh, as i did now with my go to webinar control panel as well and here I think you will understand more or less with one eye what I do mean with constriction and why those four EMAs are quite good indicator to say, hey, now it's a time to open the trade into the, into the direction of the overall trend. Look, for example, let me zoom uh, a little bit in here, then uh, it might become even a little bit more obvious but anyhow you see what i mean with constriction of four emas is exactly those kind of situations you see my cursor uh, in the circle here uh, those faces are the one we look for you see you i could even name this one two three movement behavior uh, like you find it in textbooks about uh, trading what i mean here is that we have those correction phases and overall yeah we have a long direction market goes upwards but those point in times are the good one to open a trade let me illustrate it a little bit here within um, the trade and there are already some lines in it and those lines are from from yesterday i said okay maybe even here within that period in time the worst um entry point is still a good entry point that is this one here uh, those the, those two candles are in that region maybe we have opened a long trade on euro australian dollar here um where to find a good stop loss hmm. just look for the last uh, lows so we would have maybe this um horizontal line being the stop loss which is already in the past and then minimum I said the risk reward ratio about three and higher. Um, so this upper line here would be the take profit of that trade with a risk reward ratio of three. And you see, hey, no problem to reach it. And then once again comes the next constriction phase. So opening the next long trade, maybe we would get it right, at least until now it would have worked. So that's an extremely good example for that kind of uh, setup. Uh, and you can realize if you do it for a couple of charts that you find similar behavior in um, lots of charts. I hope you understand the concept of constriction. Um, so the, I don't use a mathematical definition like, hey, um, those four lines have to come together in the order of below 0.5 percent or so any real threshold or limit no um, i want to have that as a guideline for trend trading activities out of the chart but more like a tool like uh, something which assists me to find the good entries and now back to why i have that uh, maybe amazing chart here with thousands of uh, lines and so on the answer is quite easy um, the chart gives me in a few seconds or maybe one minute um, i can go around and find the good opportunities because if for example let me highlight 
right now this Canadian dollar Swiss franc here. I see, okay, those four EMAs are already um, far away from each other. So not a good candidate, skip it. So what I look is, or what I've tried to find are those ones where we just see by eye those constrictions. And now I can go through um, the charts quite uh, fast and say, okay, uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Canada. You might have a better look here. Here it goes already out, out, out. Let me, yes, this one is already um, far away from each other. So next good candidate here, um, Swiss for Japanese yen. And you see, and I can find very fast, I can do that uh, analysis very fast. And um, I only need just a few seconds to say, okay, now I go in this one a little bit more in detail. For example, the first one here, which is, looks really a little bit funny. So if I come to that uh, now uh, with a complete chart, I would immediately say, no, um, that is not a good candidate because we just very often come from short upwards to short downwards, short upwards and so on, uh, trend behaviors. So that is not a, uh, very good candidate to say yet yeah, now now we can open a trade uh, for for that one um let me look whether i can find uh, directly a better one uh, so let me look for this one here um so there have been a couple of um, good opportunities here in the past so now mm, i would say let's wait a little bit more um, needs a little bit more time to, to say, yes, short south is the preferred direction. And now you see why I say I don't go with a slope definition by 100%. In this case, I would still say, no, this is um, a short scenario. And this one would be a short candidate. So you see, um, it does not mean that we find always 20 possible trades, but honestly, that would not even be good. If you find by that kind of analysis, one opportunity a day, good, that's fair enough. And even you can change time frames if you want, but I don't recommend to go uh, down the road to uh, M5 or M1. Um, leave that for the um, for the computers and any other trading strategies. Um, let's be a little bit more fair. Let's be on uh, H1 upwards, so H1, H4, and then you will always find um, some opportunities. And if we find one a day, that's fair enough. So that's how we can apply that multiple EMA strategy, simply by looking to four EMAs and looking for those constrictions of those four EMAs. And then we realize, hey, that's a good chance. Um, and finally, I would show one another example, and that is a Euro US dollar. Um, right now we have once again, um, all four EMAs are far from each other, so I would not open the trade right now. But because we have had a reversal, we have been on the south trip. Now we are back on the north trip. Let's wait until the next constriction, and then we can open the next long trade right now. And um, if the trend goes further, Perfect, then we will earn uh, three. If maybe we go once again back to the south, then we will lose one, and, but that's fair enough. And therefore I mentioned, uh, we will never have a win weight in the region of 50%. But if you have finally a win weight of, for example, 30% with a risk reward ratio of three to one, then everything would fine and, um, strategy works. So that is a one scenario. That is a so-called multiple EMA setup. And I hope you got it right and how those four EMAs can help you to identify 
already the early stage of a trend, or better to say that we are in a trend and that we have the end of the correction phase and that we can now open our trade into our preferred direction and have a good opportunity to, um, to get that trade right. So that's the one strategy, multiple EMA. But we have another one and that is about forex trading even i mentioned um, on mt4 MT only uh, forex um, pairs um, but nevertheless uh, you could apply it perfectly to any index as well but now we are purely driven by forex and the strategy's name is a lead lag so intuitively you might have an idea of what that means about lead and lag uh, of a pair but let's get it started a little bit other because I have once again to mention that the forex market at all is a highly correlated system that sounds now maybe a little bit crazy um, and you have heard about correlation already or you have seen correlation matrices or whatever let's really boil it down what that correlation means here in that sense and the example is quite easy and sometimes for the one or the other it might be even a surprise um, because you you deal with forex trades already maybe for years or even decades but to see how those things are correlated is um, something we have to really show here up. And just for an example, let's assume that Euro US dollar um, increases, so goes upwards. Uh, right now it goes down, but anyhow, no, uh, last movement was down, but the overall, I uh, don't go to into the details of uh, chart uh, technique right now. So we assume Euro US dollar goes upwards. That means if we look to all other pairs like Euro XXX or US dollar YYY, so that stands for, for example, Euro Canadian dollar, Euro British pound, whatever, or US dollar Canadian dollar, US dollar uh, Australian dollar, so whatever uh, comes with the US dollar. What's impossible that, for example, Euro US dollar increases, and you don't find any other movement in all the other pairs. That's strictly speaking impossible. It can't be. And the, the reason behind is that if we trade Forex, it means we trade always a quotient of two different currencies. I know that I'm only translating what's a Forex pair, but let's think about it. So what we really trade is we we know there's a currency called euro and we know that there's a currency called us dollar and what we trade is the exchange rate of those <clears throat> and now of course it might be for example the euro becomes strong or the us dollar becomes strong then if that's the case then other forex pairs must follow so uh, for example, if I'm right with the statement Euro becomes strong, then if you consider Euro Canadian dollar, it should have the same direction. Only the answer that it's in, or the, uh, in principle it's possible if the Canadian dollar is at that point in time even stronger as uh, so the other then it might change the direction, of course. But in general, we talk about currencies and not exchange rates. That helps us because what we really like to know is, hey, what's the um, currently strongest one and what's the cur currently uh, weakest one? And if I can identify the strongest currency and the weakest, then we should trade exactly that pair. So then we have 
the overall best trend behavior. And I can summarize that, and I, I will show you much more details about uh, the strategy itself later in, on the next slide. But let me first um, um, show you once again what does it mean if, if we have those correlated markets. Think about you look for a chart of Euro US dollar, and you look for another chart, Euro Japanese yen. If you look to those two charts, then in principle, you know everything about US dollar Japanese yen as well. Why? They're quite easy. If you have the two values and or even the time series of those two values, which we name chart, um, yeah, if you have Euro US dollar and Euro Japanese yen, then you have just simply to divide those two numbers and then you get us dollar japanese yen and to visualize that a little bit more more mathematically simply write euro us dollar as a quotient like euro divided by us dollar and now if we do really that kind of division like euro divided by Japanese yen divided by Euro US dollar, then you could do exactly what you have learned in uh, third class uh, in your um, uh, math school, and you cancel out the Euro, and finally you have US dollar against Japanese yen. For the one or the other, it might be a surprise, but it is as it is. And that's the reason why all our Forex pairs are that correlated, because they are based on currencies, and what we trade are exchange rates. And knowing that, we can use that for our trend trading activities. How does it work? It works the following. What we do is we look simultaneously, for example, to five, uh, six different Forex pairs. And those are just the row Euro, Australian dollar, Euro, Canadian dollar, and so on and so on. So what I have here is in total seven different currencies. And out of those seven different currencies, you can build up 21 Forex pairs. And the good thing is that what we have to do now is we have simply to focus on those six charts in order to identify the best trending forex pair at all. And how do we do that? Just quite simple. What we look is, we look for the best upwards trend, so the one which goes north, and we look to the best downward trend, so the, that um, forex pair out of those six, which goes best down. If we found those two, then we trade exactly what I call the quotient of the two. So assume the best one is Euro can, uh, Australian dollar going upwards, going to the north, and the best going south is Euro Canadian dollar. Then my trading candidate is Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. That's the one with the overall best trend at all. And then, having identified the best trending Forex pair, I can look for a good trade in exactly that pair. So we use those six charts, those six Forex pairs, to identify the best trending one out of 21. Or you might say, OK, I want to have Euro, uh, New Zealand dollar in the row as well then you cover in total 28 forex pairs. So that's uh, something you can add here uh, quite easily. Just before we, I go once again to the charts, let me mention what happens if uh, all the six go north. OK, if all the six go north, then the best candidate is the strongest, which goes north. And same vice versa if all the six uh, went south. What helps you might be to identify the strongest and the weakest is just put an EMA uh, into the chart as well. 
or you will later see in my chart I use some small boxes, some rectangles uh, with a fixed percent size and uh, those help me as well in order to identify the strongest and the weakest. But let's go in practice here. Um, so what I use is a different profile and if you are not that familiar with those profiles you can make them, store them and then reopen them. That's quite a good thing within MT4 because uh, then you don't have to create always uh, new charts. So now here we are. I get, have uh, in one um, mouse click uh, all the charts uh, fresh and uh, in the way I want to have them and uh, to have them always the same. So what do you have within that uh, profile? We have the Euro, Australian dollar, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, British pound and US dollar. And now the question is um, quite simple and sometimes but not that simple to answer. Who is the strongest? And who's the weakest? So let's go through the list of uh, candidates. Um, we immediately see, hey, we get a problem. Um, who might go north? So we have mm, not a really good uh, candidate going north. Um, we can decide who is strongest going south. Um, and even we have really today a strange situation and if I see that that uh, funny candle here within uh, British pound, uh, Euro British pound, it's really getting crazy here. But um, let's take it as it is. Um, so let's identify the strongest and the weakest. So weak seems to be Euro Canadian dollar and weeks seems to be Euro US dollar and maybe Euro Swiss franc, which shows quite a good behavior. But now here comes the but. The but here is a little bit the scale. Uh, all scales are always automatically done within MT4. And um, what I do here is um, in order to get them scaled better, I draw um, this uh, such a box, such a rectangular here, simply by this one. And now uh, let me do it once again. First, why well, start it this way? I just do it uh, freehand here, and then I uh, click it and uh, get the properties. And now I have the four corners um, of that box. And what I do, finally, I just uh, want to show you, um, I take out a, a few digits here and then multiply this with a fixed number. And in my case, I use the number 0.999, which means, finally, that this box has a size of 0.1%. And I do that with all my boxes in every chart. And that now has a meaning. That means... All my blue boxes here within those uh, six charts have a height of 0.1%. And I can use that information just visually in order to get all the six charts scaled the same. You see the smallest in height, the smallest black box is within Euro uh, Japanese Yen. And now I scale all the other charts simply that visually this box size is the same because now those two charts are scaled the same because every box is 0.1% in height. And I can do that with all the charts and that might help me to answer the question, hey, is really um, the Euro Swiss franc the one, the one with um, the highest negative slope? And now, in this case, the answer is yes. Although those two are um, close to each other. So Euro Swiss franc and Euro Canadian dollar are the two ones which are good candidates going south. And now, 
in order to really identify at least one which goes upwards and um, that is then euro japanese yen it's going a little bit upwards already uh, but not that strong you find other times in the market and uh, sorry that we don't have that good example during i speak here um, so that's a little bit of pity but uh, it is as always as it is so let's take this as an example and you uh, believe me that you find uh, later even better examples maybe tomorrow or you change time frame whatever so having the identified the one going north euro japanese yen having identified the one which goes stronger south euro canadian dollar so our trading candidate is then canadian dollar against japanese yen and that would be the one we now open a new chart and that is the one we try to identify good trading opportunities since we have had problems already with that kind of identification um, it does not look that ideal within the chart as well um, so therefore let me do here something uh, similar uh, it takes me not long let me change for all the time frame and that you get the picture a little bit more like um, a little bit more like textbook because my conclusion of what we have seen um, a minute ago uh, has been don't uh, open a trade but now i change time frame so most of them go upwards and the strongest upwards movement uh, is shown by euro australian dollar and we find one which really goes south more than all the others that is uh, euro uh, swiss franc so our trading candidate would be um, australian dollar against swiss franc and now we look into that chart same time scale and now we have a very ideal candidate for a short trade how to finalize that trade simply by technical analysis so we know short is given don't open a long trade within that chart and now it's simply technical analysis to find a good uh, trading opportunity and looking for example to that chart it might be that you say okay i want to have one additional correction here uh, maybe mm, not that huge maybe until here having a stop loss uh, above the former highs and um, then a short trade with a sell limit order at that point so that's how you can go through the markets and the idea behind is find the strongest find the weakest and trade those two against each other which just means that if you have as the strongest euro um, canadian dollar and if you have as the weakest euro swiss franc then you trade Australian dollar against Swiss franc. You look for the direction and you will find immediately what's the preferred direction because then you have the one the, the, the trend with the strongest behavior at all. And that is identified and now it's ready for some trading opportunity for that specific pair. So we use the lead leg approach to identify that final forex pair with the strongest trend and that is our trading candidate and that's the one to open or to be analyzed and then to open a trade if you want that's how it works and that's exactly uh, the lead leg strategy you immediately realize that <laughs> this cannot be applied to to um, any indices because we cannot trade them against each other we don't have really a trade like um, s&p 500 against dax uh, we can we, we might be able to to create something like that uh, but that's not meant here and uh, this is really uh, forex trading p 
purely pure forex trades and that's um, what we want to identify called lead lag and is quite helpful to identify those uh, trend trades for the forex markets so what's the summary what's uh, the lessons learned of uh, today's uh, webinar yeah overall the trend is your friend because we know that trends are a deviation from random behavior um, and that's good because whenever we leave that random behavior we can realize our trading opportunities then we know that something goes on and that is exactly the trend we would like to um, to find out and to to be triggered by those kind of uh, signals so we have two approaches here and one is the multiple ema strategy which um, generates early entries into the overall trend still nobody knows exactly the future but if we apply those kind of rules of rules it means that we go with the market with the overall behavior and that's always better than to stay against the market and that is something we do not do here because we want to 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 go with the waves to go with the money flow to go with the overall behavior and a second strategy uh, during that webinar is the lead lag strategy because that helps to identify the strongest <clears throat> trend at all and that simply by looking for the strongest currency and the weakest and to trade finally exactly <clears throat> um, the forex pair which is built out of those two currencies i hope you enjoyed um, today's webinar as well we continue next week here um, I, I will continue next week but uh, all my other colleagues they have good webinars um, <clears throat> on the JFD channel uh, you might register for those as well uh, I can only recommend it what differs us from others is simply we really trade what we talk about and um, so if you have any questions just send me an email. You see my email address here, or you um, get in touch with uh, support of uh, the customer support of JFD. You can have those slides if you want. Uh, I'm um, more than willing to share those with you. Um, and if there's something, just send me an email. And I have to say, have a good uh, evening and um, see you next time. Bye bye.